mad. <laughs> Alright, hey guys, Brian here, and um, I got a new microphone, so uh, let me know how it sounds like in the comments below. The old one sounded fine, but I guess some people were complaining, but... Alright, let's go in the game, so I open with the Kali, and the Kali is all about piling up on E4 and pushing, which um, I just did, and he develops his bishop. I decided to kind of lock things up, give scope to my white bishop, develops his knight, I push to uh, reinforce the center, got a nice little pawn chain going. Wow. Now I'm loading up the bishop, attacking the knight on h7, he's going to defend. And here usually um, your the direction of your pawn chain indicates where you should attack, so I should be attacking on the king side here, but things look a little cramped. And um, hey, why not? It's blitz, right? Why not attack on the other side? So, But that pawn push allows that knight to come in and fork my queen and bishop, which I should have seen. And now um, he's going to snatch up the bishop and some players, that's a pet peeve for them because they want the bishop pair in the end game. And of course, you know, it's good, especially in open games, but I think knights are underrated in blitz in the end game because it forces your opponent to calculate all the jumps, which burns a lot of their time, especially in the, in the end game. So I think knights are underrated in blitz in that sense. So here exchanges and notice when he takes it allows my rook to develop which allows my queen to snatch up that pawn. Now my rook is on the 7th. Very powerful. And um, he offers the trade but I want the trade on my own terms so that my, my rook is on the 7th again. And here I'm counting the pawns and I see I'm a pawn up so Ladies and gentlemen, we now have a grinding type game. It's my job to prove that I can convert the one pawn advantage. Notice the knight is on a good outpost on the six. There's a saying that a knight on the six is worth a rook. It's very powerful. You can jump to many squares, controls many squares. Here the pawn push. Um, notice how the knight has nowhere to go except back. So. Here I push the pawn so I have an outpost for my knight which blocks in his bishop. And the reason why I didn't go to the outpost first was I thought there were some checks and forks I could have, you know, but there isn't so I'm just going to switch the order and bring that knight back. He decides to trade off which is good so he no longer has the bishop advantage. And now it's time to activate the kings. So my general plan here is to escort those three pawns up with the help of my knight and king and it's um, got to be, be precise here because if I screw it up, those pawns on the queen side for black are going to roll down. So, And he has a 2 to 1 majority, um, hypothetically if he gets rid of my um, C pawn somehow. So here I'm uh, offering the exchange. And um, at this point, I knew I had the game locked in, but I just have to be really, really precise here. Just be really careful. So I offer the exchange because it'll make my life a lot easier. The king can just escort the deep pawn. He is not going to exchange because um, he knows it will make uh, things easier for me so he's wondering where to put the knight. Notice how powerful those two pawns are side by side. They control the, the four squares above them so the king is kind of effectively like sealed off. Now I push my pawns here. and. Um, Instead of taking, I want to keep my pawns connected, so throw in the uh, check here. And notice how he can't go down because my knight is protecting that square, so. Yeah, I think he just realized that right there. Now I can push that pawn, and um, again, notice those pawns side by side controlling the four squares. 
above them, and now the king is kind of sealed in the back row, so... All I have to do is redirect the knight to kick his king out of e8, and now the e-pawn will be free to queen. It'll be protected on e7 and e8 by the pawn and the knight. Now here I'm just double checking everything just to make sure. <laughs> yeah, and he knows it's over. Yeah. Hey guys, Brian here, and let's go over the game. And there were no missed opportunities in this game for tactics. So, but I just kind of want to show you guys in visual format the um, the key idea behind this whole type of you know grinding and converting your one pawn advantage. You guys are going to have a lot of games like this, so it helps to keep this in mind. So, in this position. Um, always try to think of what squares your pieces control try to get in the habit of that and it'll help you kind of be more precise in your movement in terms of which which pieces to move when and stuff like that so this pawn is controlling these two squares the king can't get in and these this pawn is controlling these two squares so notice how you have this great wall now right which uh, boxes the king out and that's how powerful two two pawns side by side can be. So let's go in a couple more moves here. And um, here, instead of you want you want to keep your pawns together. You don't want to isolate them. So here, the uh, you get the check. And notice how the king can't come in here. If the king could gets in here, then. Um, Hypothetically, let's say this knight wasn't here, then my king wouldn't be able to advance. But again, square control. This knight is controlling the square, which which um, the king cannot get into. So, boom. Again, here we have these two pawns side by side controlling these four squares. So you have this um, this great wall being built. And now it's a matter of rewriting the knight to um, kick the kick the king out of the square. And notice again how each how the pawns are controlling the squares, right? So this pawn allows this pawn to advance, and this knight is controlling the queening square, and the game is over. So um, yeah, I just want to show you guys in visual format the the importance of kind of seeing which pieces, I mean, seeing which squares that your pieces and pawns control can better help you navigate kind of these grinding precision type you know games. But in general, it's it's helpful to kind of think of it get in the habit of thinking about square control and and things like that so hope you guys enjoyed the game i hope you guys enjoyed this analysis and let me know what you think of the microphone in the comments below um is it too loud too low is there like static noise i can't really tell so i'll just let you guys tell me and um it's weird because the other mic sounded fine to me like but i guess some people thought the mic could use improvement so I don't know, I'm just experimenting like uh, I'm doing, so let me know. All right, thanks. See you guys.